really quickly, then we're going to, you, you've done national, you do regional. What's it like to play to different audiences in different parts of the United States and even the world? Because, I mean, I worked in Vienna and Germany. Quite yeah, different oh, audiences. you did. Yes, yeah. Quite different the way yes. audiences respond. Yes. And so sometimes you know it's really good by other different indicators than what we think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, in the Midwest, is it received or do you, you know, uh, are they more vocal when you're performing and talking back to the, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. What well, I mean, I, I just think, you know, I, there's a few things to say about that. I mean, I, I just think you have to be as true as you can, as true as you can with what you do. And then no matter who the audience is, they're go going to respond. One of, the, one of the best people that I worked with to watch have control of an audience was Carol Channing. Man. She was a genius. And she went everywhere. She was that. a genius, but she never liked new theaters. When she was in a new theater, a modern theater, she was very unhappy because mm. most of them were like square boxes and the audience was way out there. But she loved the old theaters we because they're that. intimate and the people were right there. And man, she had that audience in the palm of her hand. But I will say this, when I started my career, I started doing children's theater. Me too. And when you do, well, then you know. I did it in college. When I, I you was my minor. learn, right? When you learn, when you start doing children's, they don't lie to you, man. They, they children do, don't tell lie. You everything. They you, just, if you're boring or you are not truthful, guess they, what? They, they start turn to. They turn in their head. They're picking pick their nose. They'll pick their nose, or yep. they'll walk out and see their mother, or they'll or talk they'll to tell their you, friends. Be like, why are you saying that? That's not true. That's you, right. So I love it. It was the best. Training. Learning. It was the best class you could have ever yeah. had to have chil do children's theater and talk to them and get their attention because then you can talk to adults and adults will listen. And if they believe you, then you know your work is good because That's right. they don't they don't play. That's right. They don't they know when That's something's right. not true. I had a funny thing happen when I did Cats in Vienna. You know, we did the whole show in German, right. and I had some German uh, lessons when I was in college mm -hmm. because I studied opera. So I, you know, my German diction was pretty good and, you know, but I had to learn the show in 10 days and go on. Oh my gosh. Which was crazy. And you know, there's a poem in Cats. The cats stand there in the opening of the show, near the opening of the show, and they do this poem. And they go out into the house and they speak right into people's, people's faces speak. in German. And one time I went out right within the first week and this man turned around to his wife and said, das ist eine amerikanische Katze. <laughs> because they could he hear my accent. accent. <laughs> and they get tickled in Vienna when you try to speak oh, German and they hear the American accent. They just speak to you in English. And then. believe me, they have a funny accent themselves, but yes. let's not digress. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so um, did we take, uh, we'll take another offering and then we'll be back with a little bit more with Megan. We'll get into, you'd be surprised, and we'll be surprised what we're going to be surprised about. We'll see you in just a moment. <laughs> Jump into present time. Okay. Um, okay. Because you are working here and there and everywhere, and but at this point um, in your journey, you're creating a project of your own. And um, I wanted to first ask you, because your piece is about Irving Berlin and his music, and you're going to share some of the story, and I have to tell you, I said, well, if she did research on him, I'm going to look some stuff up about him, too. And he's, like, so amazing. Yes. But when did your relationship with Irving, uh, really Israel Bailin, yeah. um, Irving Berlin, uh, begin like was it from a music from, well we had great songs when we were kids our parents played but did you did you have a fascination with him always was it one of the shows of his you did or and do you have like a little affinity to know everything about him that's why I want to understand why you chose what you chose my mother always loved Irving Berlin music and she loved a lot of his songs and she would talk about him and you know, I think that's probably was my first um, intro, to him. intro to him. And she would always talk about just how simple 
his songs were. That's what everybody writes about, and how he speaks to the people, he speaks minds to everyone. of the time, and it's just... It's, it, it, it crosses every generation, and he, the, he wrote, he didn't just write for cafe society or, or brilliant intellectuals. He wrote for, for brilliant intellectuals, he wrote for garbage men, he wrote for school teachers, he wrote for everybody, be, and he made everybody feel the same. He, he broke everything down to the common denominator for all of us, mm -hmm. that we all understood the same simple things. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else quite got that right, right the way he did. Yes, and I, I've wrote...